Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations to all of the nominees on their uh, <laughs> nominations. This is a very important group of countries that you've been nominated to. Uh, uh, let me start with you, Ambassador Goldberg. Uh, I was with a special envoy of uh, the president-elect of South Korea yesterday. It was Senator Risch. We had a, a very interesting conversation. It seems like a rather, it will be a rather dramatic shift from the moon policies uh, of the last four years. Um, and um, uh, we have a large diaspora in the, uh, certainly in the United States, but in New Jersey, of uh, Korean Americans who have done exceptionally great work, including the Korean American Grassroots Conference. Uh, uh, Mr. Kim, I think, is, is uh, here in the audience. Uh, uh, there's a lot of expectation for your uh, confirmation and presence in South Korea, both by the South Koreans and by the community here. So uh, what is your assessment, then, of the recent North Korea uh, cruise and ballistic missile tests? Are, are you concerned that North Korea may be seeking to up the ante with a bigger provocation? Uh, and if so, how should we respond? Mr. Chairman, uh, the outrageous and continued provocations from the North are, of course, deeply troubling, concerning. Uh, and I think uh, our special representative for North Korea, Sung Kim, uh, said just yesterday that we expect more, especially with some of the celebrations upcoming in uh, North Korea. We have to uh, react with uh, enhanced deterrence, with uh, a solid alliance between the United States and South Korea, Japan, uh, and working uh, together to thwart these uh, threats uh, from North Korea, uh, when sanctions are available and enforceable, to also uh, continue uh, with very st strong implementation. Uh, so we do need to uh, be aware that this could happen and that these provocations, which are illegal, uh, which violate UN resolutions, which uh, violate their own commitments, uh, North Korea's own commitments, so uh, let me we'll ask continue. you, we, already uh, the ballistic missile tests are clearly violations of the UN Security Council resolutions. Should we pursue additional sanctions against North Korea? Uh, I mentioned earlier to Senator Van Hollen that uh, I'm, my primary responsibility is in the, uh, if confirmed, would be to help in the uh, solidifying the alliance and deterrence and working uh, with our military and other countries. Uh, I'm not strictly speaking, going to be responsible for a North Korea policy. No, but I, I'm sure the administration would have you on the phone once you're confirmed as part of the interagency process to opine. Don't you think so? I hope so. Uh, I, I, I hope so, too. Uh, or, or else uh, I don't know why we're sending you there. Uh, it's, no, I, it's, uh, it seems to me that there has to be a response. Uh, if North Korea can continue to create provocations, can continue to violate Security Council resolutions with impunity, and there is no response, then it will continue to do so, and it will only deepen it. Well, I think you're right, uh, Mr. Chairman, but uh, I also know that we will take uh, measures as we have uh, if it has to be uh, through uh, unilateral action or with our allies uh, after uh, these kinds of provocations that we can't rely on the United Nations when uh, China and Russia have vetoes at the Security Council. Let me ask you this. With uh, You know, we have historical issues between uh, South Korea and Japan. I recognize them. But we also have the importance of having a close relationship uh, with those two countries and ourselves uh, as an ability to meet the regional uh, challenge uh, of uh, North Korea as well as China and others. Uh, do you see playing a role in helping the South Koreans uh, find a pathway forward with their Japanese counterparts? Absolutely. Uh, I think that is a role, uh, if confirmed, that an ambassador in Seoul would, would play, uh, working with our ambassador in Japan. Uh, you know, they are each other's third largest trading partners. Japan is the biggest investor uh, in South Korea, uh, outstripping the United States. Uh, there are reasons that two democratic, technologically advanced, scientifically advanced countries 
uh, should uh, be working together more, not just on the North Korea issue, which has been uh, a, uh, an issue where they have come together, but also on other issues regionally uh, and around the world. Uh, the one last. Ms. Kennedy, uh, congratulations on your nomination. I appreciate your service in the past to our country. Um, Australia is a microcosm of the global climate crisis. A few weeks ago, Brisbane uh, in East Australia received a record 26 inches of rain in 72 hours. Uh, 2022 flooding emergency in Queensland and New South Wales is now $1.4 billion, and it's only the first week of April. Uh, the dawn of the COVID-19 pandemic in March of 2020 made it easy to forget, but Australia's wildfires were dominating global headlines until the pandemic took center stage. Those fires cost Australia an estimated $103 billion, and ocean acidification is killing thousands of acres of the Great Barrier Reef. Now, this is an incredibly important relationship, part of the Quad. As a matter of fact, I'll be traveling there uh, this recess. But there are great lessons for the United States uh, to learn uh, to how to prepare for such extreme climate disasters and how to get Australia to think about uh, uh, the climate responsibilities they have as well in their own interests as well as a global interest. Uh, can I get you to commit to fostering information and strategic exchanges for scientists and disaster responders to learn and share experiences between our two countries? I think that we, um, we should do more of that. I know that, um, that the United States has um, tried to help where possible. There were firefighters from Wyoming, for example, that went to help during the, um, the terrible fires in Australia. But certainly um, Australia uh, has learned a lot about uh, these kinds of disasters. And we also have been impacted by fires and floods and storms here in the United States. So. Um, the more that we can deal, learn about and learn how to combat and um, also move toward the clean energy transition and reduce the impacts of climate change, the faster we can do that. Um, if confirmed, I would um, be eager to work on that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I have questions for Ms. Carlson and Mr. Nathanson, but I'll submit it for the work, record. I'm very concerned about Norway in the midst of the challenges of Russia now. It's got its own neighborhood problems. And I look forward to understanding where we're headed with the Philippines in the aftermath uh, of the present uh, administration, hopefully a new dynamic uh, that, uh, that we can create. Uh, thank you.